Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Today, we're going to test a name from the past, the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Yeah, it's not the car. It was such a great car back in the old days, all-wheel drive, turbo power, a real sporty car. But it evolved something really strange when Fast and Furious 2 came out. Yes, with Paul Walker, that Mitsubishi Eclipse was... <laughs> <laughs> the definition of rice. No, I didn't like it very much. And so many words with man, 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 man in that movie. So I'm kind of sad that today I'm going to present to you the Eclipse Cross, which is now a SUV. Such a strange evolution. So when you look at the exterior, first of all, yes, that color is pretty unique. It's kind of brown, gold, or some people said... Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're funny guys, you're funny. But this is a free color that you're gonna be able to get with the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross with the gray, otherwise you're gonna have to spend money for those color. So the exterior is kind of audacious when you look at the front, nice shield from Mitsubishi, the classic line, nice LED bar, and you've got those fog lights that are really big with a lot of plastic. So it's not looking bad when you look at the front of it. On the side, typical Mitsubishi, and we've got the fully Equip model so this is the biggest wheel that you're going to be able to get so it's a classic line some nice touch of attention to give you a fluid line but once you get to the back yes you said it guys it's fully loaded and you've got that unique obsession of two layers of windows in the back and the wiper is going to only clean that first part on the top of there so I find that design really original but some people compare it to the worst ever designed car in the world Yes, we're talking about the Aztec. <laughs> but still, it's going to give you a few liters of luggage space. So how do you like the exterior? Feel free to comment in this section down there below. Let's get inside. First of all, we're going to see that 7 inches screen, which once again, when you're in the Japanese car, it's going to offer you a strange multimedia system that won't react really quickly, not a great resolution, some laggy application. And the next thing you know, you're plugging your phone using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay because you don't want to see that display and that's exactly the same thing that's happening with the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. But one of the unique things that you're going to see to control it is that touchpad right there in the center. So finally you're going to be able to raise the volume or change a track by just moving your two fingers along. Even if some manufacturer didn't master really the touchpad and how easy it needs to be to control your system, well Mitsubishi has figured it out. So it's not really bad to see that but it's going to make you feel in the 1980s. You've got a lot of piano black accent all around the car but the next thing you know you're going to see a lot of scratches appear on that material. Build quality is not that bad but it's typical Mitsubishi component. Space in the rear is kind of okay also don't forget to raise your headrest and you've got that unique dual sunroof to open the rear section it's electric but at least they should have put a button up here in front to make sure that I would be able to open those two sections and man is it noisy when you open that otherwise than that you can raise your seat a really high up to a point that if you're a short person you're going to be able to see clearly the road but with the version that we have as soon as we raise to high you're going to lose the display in the heads up display section and you cannot adjust it to see clearly even if i am at maximum sitting let's talk about the engine 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine 152 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 184 pound-feet of torque between 2,000 and 3,500 RPM, which is kind of impressive for such a little engine. You will have the paddle shifter, and yes, metal one, that's even better, through a CVD, which is going to give you the possibility to go through eight simulated gear. In the States, guys, you can go for the front-wheel drive version, but here in Canada, we only get the super all-wheel control of Mitsubishi. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, that system is an integration of the vehicle dynamics control system, monitoring each component of the four-wheel drive system. You've got active stability control, the ASC, the anti-lock brake, the ABS, and the active yawn control, the IWC, that are going to work together to distribute the torque to the rear wheels between the right and the left one. So it will apply some braking to the wheels with less traction to make sure that the other one is gonna be good to go. So is it good in the diagonal testing? 
don't keep your expectation too high guys you're gonna see that later fuel consumption in the city 9.6 liter that's kind of high for a little 1.5 liter engine 8.9 on the highway you can still use regular fuel in that one even if it's turbo let's talk about towing capacity because it's the first time that i saw in the owner manual that with five occupants it's going to be 1500 pounds that you're going to be able to tow but with two occupants this number goes up to 2000 pounds it's not because you're heavy and 250 pounds no because often more passenger comes with more luggage so still that's kind of impressive that they did that so let's talk about the road and link. Well, it's not real frenzy when it's going to come to acceleration. From a standstill, it's not that bad. But once you're going to merge at highway speed, you tend to say, I need more power. The direction is kind of creating a vague feeling. The brake modulation is rather good. But once you're going to hit some bump, this is probably the worst thing. You're going to feel the noise coming right inside the cabin and it's kind of going to jerk around just like a Jeep Wrangler. So for such a little vehicle, they should have worked more on the road feeling of it. So if the road is bumpy ahead of you, the next thing you know, you will hit those and you're going to try to overcorrect the vehicle as many times as the road has some irregularities on it. So it will lead to a lot of fatigue. So that's bad for a driver. So this might not be the perfect vehicle for you if you're living in a place where roads are really bad. Let's talk about the minus points of that car. The CVT doesn't really like to be driven into sporty mode. So as soon as you're going to ask a lot of it, it's going to tend to be lazy. Even if you turn off that eco mode. Suspension is kind of noisy. You're going to feel those bumps. You're going to try to correct it. And with a vague direction, this is not that great. Fuel consumption is kind of really high for such a little vehicle. I would have expected better numbers. You don't get a lot of support out of those seats as soon as you're going to try to drive it into a sporty way in those curves. The next thing you know, you're sitting right there with your passenger. And that multimedia system is right from the 1980s with those color and those graphic. And look at that watch. That's kind of crazy. On the plus side though, from a standstill, it's going to accelerate pretty decent. The noise level is going to be real low. And final point, how about that great warranty of Mitsubishi? But you need to keep your papers, you need to keep your maintenance log, take some photos of your invoice, of the parts that you order it, name it, because they're real picky about it. Feel free to share some of your stories with your Mitsubishi warranty with me, guys. So let's talk about price. A base Eclipse Cross will start at 25,998 Canadian. ES version with super all-wheel drive control the CVT, you've got an 18 inches wheel, fog lights, heated front seat, two USB connector, that 7 inches display and Apple CarPlay and Red Autos. So base model is kind of well equipped but it's lacking security technology that the other competitor have or will offer standard. So you need to go with the SE version which is going to raise the price at 29998 You will get a chrome grille, electronic parking brakes, dual zone climate control, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert. You need to add the technology group at $2,000 to get collision warning with pedestrian detection. You've got also the lane keep assist system, which is not that great and real annoying. And you've got the adaptive cruise control, the automatic headlights with the button feeling that is straight from the 1970s. And if you like some black accent, you can add the black package. You're going to see on the website that it's $1,000, but be careful. The next thing you know, they're adding the price of the color. That black is going to come at $300. So it's $1,300 that you should read. You've got also those black wheels, LED headlights, heated steering wheels and rear seat. And you're going to see some black edition mentioned on the vehicle. If you want to go with the GT fully equipped, you've got the multi-view camera system, the leather appointed seat, heads up display, panoramic roof with the front opening glass and the dual power sunshade. 710 watts of power Rockford Fosgate with a 10 inches subwoofer which is going to give you some great sound but this one's going to go up to 
nearly $36,000. So this is a lot of money for a compact SUV. You know the leaders in the segment. Yes, the Mazda 6.5. You probably saw the review that we did. Go check that out. You probably saw the Toyota RAV4 also, which is one of the leader in the segment. Subaru Forester. Name it. We did all of them in review. So feel free to go check out that video. You got to be careful though with the CRV turbo problem. I don't know, Honda's not telling us anything at the time that we did that video, so what's happening? I don't know, future will tell, will they all blow? I don't know, but still I can't wait to see what will happen with those. So you asked me a great question, Matt, do we go for this one or we're gonna go with the Outlander 4-cylinder because the price is really similar and you're right. Well, that Outlander 4-cylinder will have 166 horsepower, 162 pound-feet of torque, but no turbo so maintenance might be a little bit lighter over time you're gonna have more torque though in the eclipse cross and it's gonna be way more comfortable for five passenger if you go around with the outlander but it's still using a cvt with the four cylinder and another advantage is that fuel efficiency on the highway is going to be a little bit better when you compare it to the eclipse cross but let's say that you want to compare a fully equipped eclipse cross with an Outlander SE Black Edition because it's going to be nearly the same price. So you will get three rows of seating in the Outlander. You get the V6, six-speed auto, 3,500 pounds of towing capacity, but fuel consumption is going to be real impressive though. But it's going to be way more comfortable and probably more reliable over time because you don't get any turbo engine. So the choice is your guys. Comment section down there below. Let's talk about it. So in conclusion, you've got SUVs that are real aggressive in that segment. It's booming. You've got a lot of choice. It's a great warranty, a real incentive to make you buy this Eclipse Cross. I want to know that in the section down there below. But I'm going to be truthful with you guys. With so many great products out there, you need to get a real bargain to buy this car. Still, I want to know what do you think? The comment section is down there below. Do a thumbs up because you like that video. Subscribe to Car Question. Press on the bell because you're gonna see more. And you're gonna see the diagonal test of that super all wheel control of Mitsubishi. Is it really super? That's what we're gonna see later on another video of Car Question. Take care.